Today I'm going to be showing you how to make techno in the style of Enrico San Giuliano. As usual, you can download the project file, all of the samples and the presets completely free below this video, so don't forget to do that. And I'm only using the stock plugins in Ableton 10, but you can follow along in any door because the techniques do apply. Leave a comment below this video, who would you like me to cover next? We will be going into that techno kick. We will be going into the bass. We will create the cool synth riff with pitch bend. And we will create the cool pad as well. Don't forget to check out my Instagram channel, I put the handle there. And subscribe to this channel if you want tutorials each and every week. And without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so techno in the style of Enrico San Giuliano. So today I'm doing a slightly different technique or different format. I'm actually not starting from scratch. I've created the loop that sounds like this, which is obviously, as you can see, um, kind of a replica of symbiosis. So that's because I haven't really made much music in this style before. And it was actually really hard for me to try and work out some of the techniques anyway. I love to go over the front line and try this stuff. I've called it Tinker Taylor Techno Spy because that's what came to me. So I'm afraid you're gonna have to deal with that name. So let's go through everything one by one. The kick first. Techno kick, lovely. So this is how I did it. I basically found a nice meaty kick like so. That's just the main kick which you can download in this pack with all of the samples and presets below completely free. So don't forget to do that. Then I've added an overdrive. So that's off. To give it that techno industrial sound. Then I've added an EQ8 and just taken out some of that high end to soften it a bit. Then the secondary kick, just to give it some more groove, is just a softer sounding kick. That's all it is. And then together, so that's the kick. Now the bass is where things get really interesting. So if we look in what I've drawn in, you'll see it's just an octave apart. So we've got D sharp and then one octave above that too. Uh, let's see. So that's all it's doing and it's kind of an arpeggio. So I'm gonna show you how to actually do it as an arpeggio as well. In fact, I'll do that now. So if we get rid of all these notes after the first one of each each note, if you see, you know, then we just have that, we just have that. This is how you would do it with an arpeggiator. So you can select all of the notes by holding Command and A or Control and A if you're using Windows, then just press this legato button and it's gonna extend them all to hit the other one. So at the moment we've got this for our bass and I'll turn off all the effects and we'll build it up from scratch. So a sustained bass and it's just a saw wave and another saw wave with a tiny bit of detune to give it that super saw sound. Really basic, really simple. But if we stick one of these, let's see, we're going to a MIDI effect and an arpeggio in front of it, arpeggiator. We can change the rate. and then change the steps to be one octave. So if you change steps to four, that's four octaves it's gonna run through. So let's just keep it to one and it's gonna alternate. So that's basically what had been programmed in. So that's how you use an arpeggiator. Anyway, next thing I'm gonna do is fatten this sound up. So I've added some bit reduction and instantly like, how fat does that sound compared to that? And then next I've got this audio effect rack. And if you see, uh, if we turn it on, I've got the dry signal with nothing. And then you can press create chain, which is what I did. And then I created this secondary chain and then put one of these amps onto it. So let's listen to that. So it's an extra layer on top of this dry signal. So that's with the distorted signal off and that's with it on, fat mate. And then what I've done to create that kind of sweeping sound is I just 
on the distorted signal, I added an EQ8 after it, and I automated the frequency cutoff here. Like that. So it just gives it that sweeping sound. And because that bass is all high, um, you can spread it out really wide. So this is the only uh, control I'm using that's not from, why do people can contact me, stop contacting me. Um, I'm using this ozone imager from Isotope. It's free, I'll put the link below. And I've kind of just added this stereoized thing and really spread it out to make it wide. And then combined with the dry signal, that's what you got. And then after all of those, I've just added an EQ8, boosted some of the low end, taken out some of the mid, and taken off some of that high end. So subtle, but just add some more weight in the low end. And then with the kick, fat, nice. So now let's get onto the drums. Now what I've done for the drums is, let's go into that. So starting off, it's all about just finding the right sounds. If we go in, you can see it's very simple in terms of the programming. We've got this closed hat here, and I've got low velocity amounts for two of them, and then high velocity amounts for two of them, and then I just duplicate it along like that. And that's got this, that gives it some uh, difference in volume, so some dynamics. Kind of sounds like a delay, but there's more control over it. And then the next thing I've got is a ride symbol, kind of in the place of where an open hat would be. So let's turn that on, have a look. Quite subtle and quiet. Then I've got a shaker, panned the other way, hitting at exactly the same time. Let's just make it the same length so it's easier to see. And then I've got a rim shot from, I believe, a TB909 or TR909, it would be, drum machine. A classic, um, yeah, a classic dance music sound. And I've just got that playing a little bit of skip for the groove. And then one more percussion just to add a bit more interest to the groove, like a tom. And then over all of that, I've just added a ride symbol, just to add more high-end energy on every beat like that. And then I've added this really sweet drum bus thing, just to, just to take off some of the high-end, crush it a bit, make it a bit more grungy, a bit more techno. And you can see I've fed in some of this room reverb on the auxiliary channels, which I've done on the drum machine by opening this button here, pressing return, and then you can create return chain and then choose from this drop down menu whichever of your auxiliary channels you've already created. And the beauty of that is, the beauty of that is, you can then add a little bit of reverb to whichever drums you want separately from each other rather than applying it to the whole drum bus. So that is that. That's the drums. So the drums, the kick, and the bass together would be something like this. Don't need that delay. Cool, okay. Now, the beauty of this track is, and I'll show you in the break as well in a few minutes. Don't forget, if you're enjoying this, give me a hell yeah or an amen, brother, because I love it. And let's get on to the second bass. So the second bass. And you'll notice that this is only three bars long before it loops around. So that's, again, something that took me a bit of time to work out. Most tracks, uh, most techno and house tracks are going to be four bars long before the loop repeats. But that's cool, something a bit different. So for this one, I use the same notes and this key is written in G sharp minor. So you can hear that that's the root note of the track. If the track kept just reverted to this, you, you could hear it's the home. 
you know, if that was the beginning of the track, it would make sense on that note. And the way that we can test that is, if we zoom out and we'll use my te template technique, let's grab all of these notes and we're going to notch it just up one so this G sharp is on A. And the reason for that is A sharp minor uses only the white notes. So if we press fold, if, if only the notes being used are on the white notes, then we know that it's in a minor track. You can see there. And I've just tested it by bumping it up to A sharp because if I was to test it here on G sharp minor, you'd have to know all of the notes in G-sharp minor to be able to be absolutely sure, whereas it's easy with A minor natural, as I said, because it's just the white notes, so anyone can very quickly see whether that's the correct key or not. Um, so here we go. For the second bass line, what I've done is, again, used the exact same bass line as the, the first one, except instead of an arpeggiator, I've just kept it sustained. And again, I've started with two saw waves in the oscillators, detune them slightly to give it that super saw sound. And then I've turned the unison on as well. So this is with the unison off. Like, it's like there's no guts to it. And that's with the unison on and detuned as well. Detune it. You know, it's getting interesting there. And then I've added some glide, so it sweeps between each note. So that's with no glide or portamento. And this is with some. So that's an extreme example. You can hear it sweeping between the notes. So that is what I've done. Then I've just taken off some of the high end because we it's a bit too, too harsh. So that filter takes out the high end. Then this EQ takes out the low end so it's not gonna clash with our main bass. So together. So we're already, already getting there. Now, the next thing we are going to look at is this riff. Now this was really hard, I found this difficult, but there's a couple of ways that you can do it. So the first way I did it turns out like this. Now in terms of the audio effects rack, you can see I did what I did earlier on the first bass, which is have a dry chain. In fact, I'll just move it to the top so it's a bit more obvious, call it dry, boom, call this one distorted, although technically it's just a bit crusher on there. So you've got the dry, then you've got the distorted, and then together, just to just to layer them. Then I've put another one of those drum buses to take out, compress it a bit, crunch it up, and then an EQ just to take out some of the low end, so it doesn't clash with the bass. Now let's see what's going on in the interesting part of this. If we turn all this stuff off so it doesn't confuse us uh, and then go in, I've just, you'll see I've just drawn in the notes very similar to I, the way I did the first bass line, which is on octaves. So you can see there it's jumping up. So I'm jumping here a couple of octaves there, but you'll see that some of the notes I've got very low velocities, and then some of the accented notes I've got high velocities. And that is so... I'll turn off this and first. And some of them sound louder. Now the way I've done that is, again, I've just used Oh no, I've used a square wave and a saw wave, detune them slightly. But in this section, in the filter, I have um, basically created it so the harder the velocity is, the higher up the filter hits. So this is with no none of that on.
but why is that I'm doing that oh yeah because there are two oscillators and they're each going through their own filter so this is what um, happens when you start applying that effect it basically means that if there's a low velocity this filter here and this filter here um, are going to be very low and then they open right up the frequency opens up when you've got a hard velocity so that's what I've done to give it some variation and some accented notes So you've got some like woo 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 and then some bam 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 like that technical stuff and then this this thing here um, what even is this I think it is in MIDI effects again and it would be yeah it's this random thing so I oh know it's not the random thing what is it then it is ah oh yeah it's a randomizing of velocity okay so all it is is it's a it's applying this to the volume so it's adding some more variation just making things a bit more dynamic so all together um, you've got this so far and I'm going to show you another trick for that uh, riff thing very soon as well um, that's really cool, gives it some of the pitch bend that he's got in this track. Next thing we're going to look at is the pad. Now this is really simple. So I've just used a preset for, that comes with Ableton for the analog. Uh, and let's turn off the effects. And it's just... So G sharp is the root of the track, so that's the first note. And then I'm hitting the fifth of each note. Uh, sorry, the fifth of that chord. So that's a D sharp. And then I'm just doing a D sharp, an octave below as well. So it's a very simple chord. And then at the end, changing it by moving that top note down a couple of semitones. Now I'm adding some overdrive to give it some grit using a filter. To, make, to take out a lot of the frequencies and add some resonance and then I'm adding a pump comp and all this is side chained from my side chain channel so as usual if you've watched this channel before you see I do this a lot but I've got a little tick hitting on every beat I've silenced it if we look at the routing so it's the audio is not going to master like everything else it's just going to sends only and that means I can use that signal but you never actually hear it. So in the, let's look at the pad again, I've chosen my audio from SC, which means side chain, that's why I call it that. And you can see it's pumping that threshold. And that's just to allow the kick to kick through a bit more. Like that, that Eric Prids call on me effects that we all know because it's been around for ages. And it just, you can see how you don't need loads and loads of tracks to get a full sound. You just need to select the sounds carefully, compose it carefully, and then process it carefully. And that's going to give you a much cleaner mix. So, um, on the drop. We've got that. But in the break, this is the other thing I wanted to show you about the riff. Now, if you know the original tune of this, which I'm not going to play because I don't want to get flagged up for copyright, then you'll know that there's a bit of pitch bend in some places, like this. Now, that's a bit harder to achieve. And the way I've done it, the only way I could really figure out was just to have the arpeggio playing, which is... G sharp, the root of the track. G sharp, the root of the track, but one octave up, and then one octave up, like simple. So with no 
and I've just used it's you, we've already looked at the processing for this so we'll just leave it on now the way I've done that is if you've got this pitch bend range here which you get to by selecting this part of the analog if it's on zero it's just going to stay playing the G so let's have a listen to that Sounds cool, right? But we want it to change pitch. So the way I've done that is I've put 12 semitones as a pitch bend range, which is an octave, which means if I'm, I've got my pitch wheel here on my keyboard. So if I just loop the bit that is playing a G and then I press my pitch bend, whoops, gonna have to select arm it. I'm just wiggling the pitch bend wheel. If I put it up as far as it goes, it goes up an octave. And if I hold it down fully, it goes down an octave. And that's because I've selected my pitch bend range to be 12 semitones, which is one octave. Anyway, let's get to what I've done in here. Now, this was a bit pernickety or finickety because if you go into the MIDI, press this envelope button, I've actually done the pitch bends manually. I program them in like this. And I had to do this by ear. But it does mean that you get to do this cool pitch bend thing because if we were to take this pitch bend out, about 462, and have it just manually. So this pitch bend changes for each note that I'm playing. So listen to what that happened. So that's what's happening. But it does allow you to then do this pitch bend thing, which I haven't figured out another way to do it. So if you do, let me know in the comments. Uh, so that is how he would have done that bit. But actually the chances are he would have done it in a different way that I just don't know about. But this is, yeah, this is basically all of the elements to this track. I know it was a much faster one today, but I've touched upon some techniques I haven't touched upon before anywhere else, like this using the arpeggio, using the velocity, assigning the filter to the velocity, and you can get a pretty banging effect relatively easily. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Again, download everything, the project file, the samples, the um, presets that I've created as well. Pick it apart till your heart's content. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I've put the handle here somewhere on the screen. Um, yeah, I'm trying to grow that. So follow me over there, share different tips every day, some like quick bites. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. Cheers and happy producing.